In a previous video, a UC Interactive video, we talked about classes, objects, methods, and attributes. If you haven't had a chance to watch that, I recommend watching it now, because what we're going to do is demonstrate that video through code. In this project, we have two classes. One is what we'll call a Java Bean, which is vehicle. Java Bean has attributes, gallons of gas, miles per gallon, and odometer. The other class that we have is one called Driver, and the idea with Driver is that we're interacting with the user. We're prompting the user for information, and we're storing that information in the class called Vehicle. The challenge is, how do we get information from the class called Driver to the class called Vehicle? To do that, we need to create an object of the class Vehicle. So in the prompt user method, let me go ahead and expand this. In the prompt user method, I'm going to create an object of type vehicle by simply saying new vehicle, open and close paren and terminate with a semicolon. This by definition is a constructor call. Now, what do we do when we have this object? It's not much use to us right now, but it will be more use when we assign it to a variable. A variable, remember, is a named place in memory. It requires two things, a data type and a name, a unique name. Uh, we've done variables before. If you take a look in the class called vehicle, we have gallons of gas, which is a double, miles per gallon, which is an int, odometer, which is an int. So you see double and int is the type. Gallons of gas, miles per gallon, and odometer is the name that has to be unique. So that's what we're going to do here. We need a variable. And we'll just call it my vehicle. We'll put it on the same line. But we have to give that a type as well. Okay, what's the type going to be? Well, the type in this case is going to be the class called vehicle. And uh, like so, vehicle, my vehicle. So vehicle, my vehicle means we have a variable called my vehicle of type vehicle. And that's the nice thing about object-oriented programming is that you're not limited to the eight primitive types, byte, short, int, long, double, float, uh, boolean, and car, and the type string. You can combine these things together into more complex types called classes, as we've done here with vehicle, okay? So you kind of put them all together in one unit, and then that one unit is easy to use, to ship around. It keeps everything joined together in a nice and concise manner. Now, we have a red line, and we know when we see a red line, we have to stop immediately and fix it. And the reason we have a red line here is I have to assign the object I've created here to the variable that will store that object on the left. And the equal sign is our assignment operator. What that means is do whatever is on the right of the equal sign, and then take the result of that operation and store it in the variable to the left of the equal sign. Be careful with this. The single equal is the assignment operator in Java. It is not testing for equality as we do in math. In other words, when you see the equal sign in math, it tends to say one thing equals the other. Uh, in Java, a single equal just means we're assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. If we actually wanted to compare things, we would use what's called the double equal or uh, try it one more time. We would use what's called the uh, double equal or uh, nine equal equal nine like that, or nine equal equal four plus five. So just a, a little subtle difference there. So let me put a comment here. Create an object of type vehicle and store it in the variable vehicle, my vehicle. So uh, I named it my vehicle. What are some rules around variable names? We typically use camel case, which means the first word is entirely lowercase. Every word thereafter, we uppercase the first letter. Uh, no spaces. We can include numbers and in variable names, um, but not as the first character. And to be honest, we don't frequently do that. If you find yourself making variables called test1, test2, test3, or var1, var2, var3, that's bad practice. The variable name should be very descriptive of what it's storing. The more descriptive your variables are, the less you have to do these inline comments. So we prefer to have readable code over unreadable code that has to be commented to make it readable. Um, honestly, 
I avoid abbreviations because you tend to forget how you abbreviated something. So you can make a variable name fairly long before you run out of room. So I tend to make variable names very long so that, so that I don't have to abbreviate, remember what the abbreviation is, and I know what the variable is doing. Okay, nonetheless, we now have this variable. And what we can do is we can, uh, we can call methods on this variable. So you watch if I type my vehicle dot, take a look at the methods that come up. Some of these are going to look familiar. Get gallons of gas, get miles per gallon, get odometer and go and then set gallons of gas, set miles per gallon, set odometer. Those are the methods that we made when we wrote the class vehicle. So let's go ahead and let's pass some values in to these methods. So let's take a look at the setter methods. We have int miles per gallon, so that's going to be a whole number. Odometer, int odometer, that also is going to be a whole number. Gallons of gas, double gallons of gas, because we don't tend to consume one entire gallon at a time. We consume small fractions of gallons of gas at a time. So for that, we want to have a double. Now, why did we make doubles and ints? Why not make these all strings? A string purely represents character data. Uh, we cannot perform math on a string, even if the string is just storing a number inside of it. If we want to do math, which we are going to want to do in this go method, then we have to save our data. We have to use the data type double and int. Remember what data type means. If you go back to that binary calculator spreadsheet I showed in an earlier video, that's, that's what tells us that all of these things are zeros and ones under the covers. And the data type, double int string, vehicle, whatever it is, that just tells us how to interpret those zeros and ones. We convert them to a number. Sometimes we'll leave them at that number as the case of a double or an int. But for a string, or for a color, we will map that number to either a character, if it's a string, or a color with red, green, blue values, if it's, if it's a color. Okay, so back to driver. I'm gonna say my vehicle dot set gallons of gas. And because double is a fractional type, I might, see 12, I might say 12.0. Uh, so the decimal indicates that it's a fractional type. Now my vehicle dot set miles per gallon. Uh, let's say 20. Let's make it a nice number like 20. My vehicle dot set odometer. We'll make that maybe 10,000. Again, a whole number. Uh, okay, so I'm going to say set the attributes in my vehicle. Okay. Next, we can say move the vehicle, and we can say my vehicle dot go, and then we'll give it a distance maybe of 40 miles. And uh, if I go over, we go ahead and save. If I take a look at vehicle, we see that the go method isn't currently doing anything. Uh, but that's okay. We can make it do something. So what I'm going to do is I am going to say take the distance, add it to the odometer, also take the distance, divide it by the miles per gallon, subtract that unit from the gallons of gas. These equations are quite simple. So I say distance divided by miles per gallon. You notice I use the slash that's on the question mark key. That is our division operator in Java. If you have a numeric keypad on your keyboard, you'll also see it's usually between numlock and the asterisk where the asterisk is what we use for multiplication. So I'm dividing distance, which in our case is going to be 40, by miles per gallon, which in our case is going to be 20. That will give me a product of 2, and I need to save that into a variable. Remember how we assign something to a variable? We use that equals operator. So I can say int gallons consumed, consumed equals distance divided by miles per gallon. Now, take a look at this. Gallons consumed. You notice I've declared this variable down here on line 23. Data type int, although really probably could make that a double. Probably a better idea to make that a double because we could consume a partial gallon. Uh, so double gallons consumed. I'm declaring the variable here within a method. I'm not declaring it out here where I declared my attributes previously. What this means is that this variable has a limited scope or a limited life. In other words, it's only alive 
in the area that I've highlighted now, line 23 through line 24. This is a temporary variable just meant for a temporary calculation. We don't want to make that an attribute because if we do, we end up with a whole bunch of attributes up here that aren't describing the long-term state of our vehicle. And that, be, that can become a little challenging to maintain because maybe we no longer need the variable, but we're still declaring it, and then it gets sloppy. Uh, when we write a program, we want to housekeep it frequently. We don't want to have dead code or things that are sitting around not used because as a programmer, that's more time that we have to look at that stuff and think about what it's doing, and that's wasting very valuable time. So when possible, it's best to make a variable a local variable, or in other words, declare it within a method. And how do you know? Well, you just know, is this something I'm going to use in another method, number one? If so, it could, should be an attribute. If not, it should be a local variable. Uh, is this something that is that describes the long-term state of an object? Uh, gallons consumed is really temporary, so no, it's not. So its best position is within a method. Okay, let me add a comment here. Compute the gallons of gas consumed during this trip. Okay, now subtract the gallons consumed from the gallons available. Okay, so I'll say gallons of gas and then the equal sign. Now think about this. This is the assignment operator, right? So what I'm doing, we already have a variable called gallons of gas, but I'm changing the data that is in that variable because I'm reassigning it here with this equal sign or this assignment operator. So I can say gallons of gas equals gallons uh, of gas, which is the previous value, minus gallons consumed. That's where I say we have to be careful and realize that the equal sign is not indicating equality, but indicating assignment. Because certainly if gallons consumed is a non-zero number, these two sides of the equal sign are going to be different. So we're not saying they're equal. We're simply saying perform the math on the right. Uh, take, take whatever the result of that is and assign that as a new value in gallons of gas. Okay, now there's a way we can shortcut this as well. We can say gallons of gas minus equals gallons consumed. And what that means is just take the existing value of gallons of gas and reduce it by whatever gallons consumed is. Either way is just fine. Let's try the other way on odometer. If I've driven 20 miles, then I want to increase my odometer, or 40 miles it was, then I want to increase my odometer by 40 miles. So I'll say odometer equals odometer plus uh, distance. That way is acceptable. But we know a little shorthand way to do this is to say odometer plus equals distance, or just increase odometer by distance traveled. Okay. And with that, we're all set. So I hit save. And I go back to our driver and myvehicles.go. Uh, okay, this is now ready to go. Now, we would like to print out the current state of the vehicle. And by state, I mean the value of its attributes. Now for this, we could call each of those setter methods. We can take that, we can assign that to a variable, print out the variable. We can do that with each of these setter, uh, getter methods. But honestly, there's a quicker way to do it. Chances are we're not going to be the only one interacting with this class called vehicle. So a better way to do this is to make a special method. Uh, this is just kind of one that's special in the Java programming language, one that's called toString. So I type in the word toString, and I hold control and hit space. And when I hold control and hit space, I'm asking NetBeans to help me out. Because this method is special, uh, NetBeans knows what I want to do here. It knows I want to override this method to string. Don't worry about what override means just yet. Uh, just know this is a little shortcut that we can do to get this special method. What I'm going to do is take a look at the toString method. You see it wants to return a string. 
that string is going to is going to represent the current state of the vehicle. So I'll say return uh, gallons of gas and then plus gallons of gas plus double quote uh, and then odometer and then plus odometer and terminate with the semicolon. So whenever we call this method, it's going to return this string to us. And notice there's a subtle difference here. Any text that doesn't change is contained within quotes. Any text, or I'm sorry, any value that's variable, or in other words, can change, is not enclosed with quotes. Quotes. That's very important. So uh, if you put a variable name in quotes, you're not going to get the value of that variable. You're going to get that variable name. So be careful with quotes. Also note that we have a plus, which in this case is a concatenation operator, or in other words, it's going to take several values and put them together into one string. Okay? We have to have this return statement, which means when we call the method, we are going to generate and return this value. And whatever we're returning, the data type of what we're returning has to be the same as this method return type here. Okay, so now let's go back to driver. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say SOUT, remember that shortcut for system out print line. And I'm simply going to say double quote, fly, you know, don't even need that. I'm going to say my vehicle dot two string. Okay, let's run the program and see how it works. So I simply press play. And what you're going to see is we have our prompt so far in driver main, in prompt user. You see gallons of gas is 10. Remember, we started it at 12 and the odometer is now 10,040. So in this video, we've seen how to create an object from a class, how to store that object into a variable, how to invoke methods on that variable, uh, and then how to use this special method called toString. We also saw a little bit about return types, assignment, and math. In the next video, I, I'm going to go ahead and commission put, uh, uh, commit and push this to GitHub. In the next video, we're going to talk about a special kind of method, these getter setter methods, and more importantly, why we have them which is something called encapsulation. We'll see you then.